what better way to come back after about a year than with another seven things about affinity designer you may not know about okay let's get straight into this i'm nervous you're nervous we're all back let's go first off power duplicating now most of you will probably know is that if you're going to duplicate something you can click and you can hold alt and you can drag and you can duplicate the object or alternatively you can actually hit control and drag and it will allow you to use constraints to still be used when you've duplicating however there is another way that you can do things which is power duplicating so for example if we do make a duplicate of this so if we use alt and drag and move our circle down and to the right and let go if we now hit Control and j which is power duplicate we will duplicate our duplication if that makes sense so we've moved our circle down and to the right we hit Control and j it'll move it again down and to the right and again and again and again and again you get the idea the more we do this the more we are duplicating our shape so we can get an infinite amount of duplications in that same pattern without having to do too much work so Control j power duplicating really helpful all right let's move on to number two which is importing multiple assets. Now, I really wish I knew this beforehand. It would have saved me so much time. Let's say that we have a folder full of assets that we wanna import into Affinity Designer. Now, looking at this folder that we have right here, we have 443 items just in this folder. If we wanted to, we could, and this is how I did it, and I'm really ashamed about it, do this one at a time and import them into Affinity Designer, put it into the asset panel, and kind of just keep doing that over and over again. But what you can actually do is if we go back one folder, so here we have all our brands within this folder. If we just click and drag this straight into the asset panel in Affinity Designer and let go, give it a bit of time, depending on how many things you've got in that folder, it'll take kind of about that long. And we have everything within that folder all within our assets panel, just like that. Now, like I said, I did this the stupid way. I did it slowly and I wasted a lot of time, but now you know, just get everything in one folder, transfer it straight across, and you'll just have things just quicker. Don't waste your time like I did. Learn from my mistakes. Now that actually brings us straight on to number three, which is the background of the assets panel. So as some of you may know, you can change the user interface of Affinity Designer into light mode, dark mode, but you can actually separately change the assets panel as well. So this is a recently new feature, but if some people find it useful, then it's gonna be useful. Within the assets panel, if you head over to the burger menu right at the top here, click on that and you can go down to background. Now this gives us a few options. We've got auto, which would be the same as what your current user interface is. Dark, which if you wanna force it to be dark if you're in a light user interface, or light if you want it to force to be light in a dark interface. So for example, I'm in a dark interface. If I click light, everything turns into a light interface, which actually makes some of these logos a lot easier to see. So I might wanna leave it like this. However, there is also another option in this. If we head over this menu again, go down to background and change it to checkerboard, we can actually get a checkerboard pattern as well, which if you want to use it, go ahead. This hurts my eyes, probably not going to do it, but it's entirely up to you what you want. Like I said, I'm going to probably stick with the same background throughout, but knowing that's available actually makes some of these assets easier to see. We've actually got a dark mode checkerboard as well, if you want to make it look like that. And if you did want to go back and take out the checkerboard straight down to background, turn off checkerboard, and we're back into dark mode. So again, something that some people will find really useful and, and quite helpful. All right, I'm completely out of the swing of things. I think this is number four, and we're gonna call this one clean knife cuts. Now, if you want a rundown of how the knife tool actually works, check out the video up in the corner there. But one thing that most people aren't aware about with the knife tool is that it actually has a stabilizer, which means that you can actually make cuts quite cleanly and quite smoothly, kind of like how the brush tool is if you're using a stabilizer on that. So we have our regular knife tool here. Up in the top, we have our stabilizer, which you can turn off and on. And next to that, we have our type of stabilizer. So we got rope and we got window. I tend to find rope is the most comfortable for me but everyone's got their preference there's uses for both in different situations so with this selected with our stabilizer on you can see that we now have a little rope behind our knife tool which right now I'm not cutting anything so it's not gonna do anything but it does mean when we make this cut it can be a lot smoother than if it was freehand 
So that's our smooth cut. If we take the stabilizer off, if we go again, yeah, that's not too bad. But depending on how steady your hand is and how clean of a cut you want to do will depend on how well you can do it. I've been cutting things for years, so, you know, I've kind of figured out how to do it pretty well. But that stabilizer is there to just make things a little bit easier to do. All right, let's move on to number five, which is numbers for opacity. So let's say we've got this cut up circle here and we want to change the opacity. If we select one of these sections here, obviously we can go over to the opacity here go into the drop down and change it from there but we want to speed things up we want to work efficiently so rather than doing that we have the part of the circle that we want to change the opacity on we use the numbers on our keyboard so one corresponds to 10 percent opacity two for 20 percent three for 30 percent four 40 percent and so on zero is 100 percent so simply if we select what we want to select hit a number so i'm going to hit three and you can see that our opacity has changed to 30 straight away i'll choose a different part of the circle let's go 70 so click seven let's go to this one uh, we want to make that 10%. So we hit one, go over here, change that to 90%. So we hit nine, didn't change much, but you can see on the side here, our opacity is 90%. If we want to change something back over to 100%, so if we select this area again, hit zero, and we go back to 100%. So it just makes things a little bit easier. You've got one hand on the mouse, one hand on your keyboard, and we can just quickly change the opacities of multiple things very easily, very quickly. Right then, on to number six. We're getting through these pretty fast. This is controlling booleans better. So in the past, we made a video about booleans or booleans or however you pronounce it, still don't know. But if you wanna check out that video, go into the top there. One thing that wasn't mentioned in that video and that was actually brought to my attention by one of our lovely commenters right here is that if we select all the shapes that we want to use in the boolean, if you hold alt and click on whatever shape, we can create that as what you can call a key shape. So for example, if we use this purple circle here, we just zoom in just to make it a bit easier. If we hold alt and click that circle, you can see the outline is a little bit more bold than it usually is. And if you look in the layer panel, you can see that our purple circle is a slightly different shade. If we click that on and off, you can see the slight difference there. Now that is selected, what that then means is that whenever we choose a Boolean tool, it will either add or subtract from that key shape. So now that we have that selected, if we hit add, we will make a purple shape. If let's say we hit subtract, it will take it away from the purple shape. If we realize, hang on, we didn't want it to do that. If we undo that, hold alt and maybe click the green one. You can now see the green shape is outlined blue a little bit darker. Hit subtract and now we're taking things away from the green one. So it's a really helpful way of just controlling your Boolean operations a little bit better. Assigning a key shape, holding alt, Clicking that just means that there's less guesswork in kind of what you're doing. And finally, let's get to number seven, which I'm gonna call clearing space. Let's say you've got a busy design, something like this. You've been working on it for ages and you realize you wanna make a very small adjustment to something. When you have a busy design, it's very difficult to isolate things to one specific thing. However, say for example, we want to isolate one of these green circles in here, but it's hard to click which one I want. So in the layer panel, you can actually hold Alt, and click the layer that you want and it will isolate that layer making everything else disappear we can make whatever change we want to this shape let's say we want to change the size and the color and we click anywhere else and everything else will come back to where we wanted it to be say we wanted to do that again go down to where we want in the layer panel find the layer that we want hit alt and click and it'll disappear everything else make the change that we want to make and you're probably not going to see this one because it's behind the first one but we can click off and it will reappear with everything else with busy designs it can be really hard to find what you're trying to do and this actually makes it a little bit easier to just isolate one thing work on that one thing and then bring everything back quite seamlessly there you go, another seven things about Affinity 2.0 that you may not have known about. As always, if you find this helpful, make sure you hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe for more videos like this. If you have something that you think most people don't know that you use every day in Affinity, then drop it in the comments below. You might be featured in one of the future videos. If you want to check out the rest of the videos, then make sure you check out the playlist right here. And as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.